and okay we should be up and hopefully and okay we there we go so we're live uh we're gonna jump into the brain dump and i know we're a few minutes late already but <laughs> better late than never right guys so let me get there we go now I'm looking at me and listening to Mike punch his keyboard over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, not so bad. I'm going to mute you, Mike, until we come back to you. All right, I'll see you now on Facebook. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of a lot of business this week, right, guys? Um, first and foremost, uh, stun guns have come to New Jersey in some small capacity, maybe not quite how we initially imagined, but they're here um, due to a recent Supreme Court decision changing the legal status of stun guns. Um, and we've got one of my favorite instructors here that we'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, before we do that, there's also a lot of excitement about this. This is the new 1022 Express Mag release from Matador Arms. And you guys know I'm, I'm kind of geeked up every time Matador drops a new product. But this is an extended magazine release for your 1022. And right away you'll notice it comes around the trigger guard. And there's some other manufacturers that make a similar system that wraps around the trigger guard that way. This is a little bit shorter and incorporates a paddle uh, so you can access it with either left or right hand while you're while you're running your 1022. So uh, I'm gonna order a bunch of these. They're not in the US yet. It's gonna be a couple more weeks before they hit, but these are really exciting. Uh, it's a neat way to, uh, I think, improve on the mag release on the, the Ruger 1022. And if you're using your 1022 in any kind of uh, rimfire steel challenge, or maybe you're bringing it out for the Minuteman challenge, you want to do your mag changes a little bit faster, this should facilitate speeding up those mag changes. Like I said, they're not in the U.S. yet. It's a couple more weeks before that happens, but I'm going to get a get them loaded into the online store for pre-orders. Um, so you guys will be able to get a hold of these as soon as they hit the U.S. Um, I've already spoken to Annika over at Matador Arms. She's really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. Um, the vector side folding adapters are also still flying out of here faster than I can get them in. Placed another order this morning that's already sold out, so I'll be placing another order on Monday just trying to catch up with you guys that are uh, ripping through these. Um, and it looks like we've got six people, five people here watching tonight. Uh, Joe Middaw is here. Walt Keeley is here. The infamous Ruger. <laughs> Tony Simon says, Speedy mag changes are important in the Minuteman Challenge. They sure are. Um, so that's kind of like the new product stuff. Um, there's been a lot of questions about stun guns. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And I guess now would be a good point to introduce my guest, Mr. Mike Wolf from Justifiable Force and Martial Strength Training Academy. Um, thanks for coming, Mike. Mike? Yes, sir. How are you? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> it's a live show, Mike. Um, so if if you've watched the brain dump before or listened to the brain dump before, you should probably know who Mike Wolf is by now. If not, go ahead and introduce yourself, Mike. Tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Mike Wolford. I'm a owner and training director of Just Fable Force, which is a training group based out of New Jersey, where we go with the lawful use of force, whether it be empty hands, edge weapons, impact weapons, firearms, and our business models. Pretty much, we educate citizens on on the how, when, where, why to use force, as opposed to just teaching you the skill set. We're also teaching you, hey, when do I really apply the stuff? In accordance with the law. I think that's, especially living in New Jersey, that weighs on people's minds. And the more we train people, the more we realize the fear of New Jerseyans when it comes to using force is uh, very strong. The force is strong with them, but you know, bad kind of force. 
Right. The force and the, uh, the Stockholm syndrome, which seems to be one of the, the biggest things you, you work on educating people on is that they actually have a right to use uh, methods of various methods of self-defense in the state. And I know there were certain things that I certainly had wrong before taking your classes. So it's been educational for me as well. Um, but it, it seems like, and I've been through a bunch of your courses and, and we talk about you regularly here, uh, Tony and I both do, and wherever we go, we're kind of dragging you along. So deal with it. <laughs> um, but I feel like a lot of your courses, you start off with, with like a myth, myth buster section of going, okay, let me, let me scrub a bunch of this crap you've heard out of your head. So you know what's true and what isn't. Well, I, I pride myself on being Jersey myth buster when it comes to, uh, like that, because if we don't really know what we're going to do, how are we going to make a decision, right? How are we going to make a critical decision in a stressful environment? If I don't really know what I can do when I'm sitting in a chair behind a desk drinking a coffee. Right. And if I don't know the law, I don't know, you know, use of force, uh, you know, military would call it rules of, rules of engagement. If I don't think about what I'm going to do beforehand, that's good. That's half the battle, right? If you look at, we talk about, we will go talk about sports. Uh, any professional athlete will tell you, well, 90% of the game is mental. Right. And you go, well, how much of that, how much of the, how much of the game do you train mentally? And you go, well, not very much. <laughs> um, and that's what you look at. The physical event, but we're training has to be a large part of it. It's mental, right? It's like, like Colonel Cooper said, you got to play the when then thinking game. And that incorporates with, Hey, what can I really do in accordance with the law? Cause that's going to dictate your tactics. Absolutely. Well, and, and the other thing, you know, when when I present trainings and, and doing stuff for uh, for my day job, I always tell people that's that's the part of the OODA loop that you can shorten up to is that you have to observe and orient. But once you get to the decision making portion, that's the part where you can really speed up the process, because if you've worked it out ahead of time, you're not in the moment trying to figure out what you're going to do. You've already established that and you move straight to act. Well, that's it. I, my, my new saying is, uh, the body will never go where the mind hasn't been. Right. Yeah, I know you've thrown that one out quite a bit. So, um, the the big hot button topic and the reason I've got you uh, on the brain dump tonight in particular, and <laughs> I'm hoping we get a lot of hate mail for this because I don't think what you have to say is going to be very popular, although it is, in my opinion, the most accurate assessment. Um you know, and again, Mike and I talk quite a bit. Uh, so over the last few days, we've, we've kind of gone back and forth on this. And if you look at the laws in New Jersey, it's kind of like reading one of those choose your own adventure books when you're a kid. You can't just read the one law you think pertains to what you're looking at. That law is going to reference another law. So then you have to look up that law and that law will reference yet a third law. And then you have to look up that law. And then that'll reference a fourth law. And then you have to look up the fourth law and tie all four of those things together to understand what the actual legality of the situation is. So um, obviously the big thing are the changes to 2C39 uh, as far as possession of stun guns, tasers. Um, how are they collectively classified, Mike? Five basically talks about unlawful possession of weapons period okay. All right so unlawful possession of weapons which include machine guns handguns rifles shotguns and d other weapons right and that's where the stun gun is going to fall into it's going to fall into d is other weapons which pretty much step by definition is any person who knowing has in his possession any other weapon under circumstances not manifestly appropriate for such lawful uses as it may have is guilty of a crime of the fourth degree Okay, so we kind of jumped ahead, but that's that's the long and short of it. So your interpretation of that law, your understanding of it, and again, as a law enforcement professional and somebody who does this for a living in addition to uh, all the other stuff, can you still affect an arrest because someone is physically in possession of, now these are legal, right? They're legal to own in New Jersey. You can possess them in your home, but if I'm walking down the street with this in my pocket, under 
what was it, 39 dash 5? Yes. Can you affect an arrest because I'm in possession of this thing? Well, here it is. Uh, are you allowed to possess a firearm? I'm allowed to possess a firearm in the state under certain exemptions. Okay, so is there an exemption that that you're allowed to possess other weapons? Not from what you just said, no. So, so let's look at, well, let's, let's take a step back and we're going to look at, as far as we know, the only document that, that has come from the Attorney General based upon the stun gun. So... Uh, Right, I got it right here. So we look and when at this, I when I put this on YouTube, I'll I'll put a link to this in the show notes. Go ahead. The one I sent you, right? Yeah, that was October twentieth, correct? Uh, let me check the date on here, but yeah, yeah, October twentieth. Uh, so so that in a nutshell, pretty much saying is NJSA two C thirty nine dash three, which makes a crime of the fourth degree for any person to knowingly have in his possession any stun gun to exempt this to ex extent this statute out right prohibits on the criminal penalty individuals from possessing electronic arms That's what it's saying is basically un unconstitutional right that um law right there to see so everyone knows you're out there in a facebook land you know to see right is basically new jersey criminal code so if anyone doesn't know that new jersey statute annotated right njsa 2a njsa 2c i should say and then it has the statute number so we're looking at here, it's, it's, uh, if you post the, the link to it, it talks about 39-3H and 39-9D, which makes it illegal to sell. Now it's saying basically in response to that consent order, Superintendent of State Police proposed a rule published at 49, I won't read these numbers here, that would maintain the Submission on sale and possession of stun guns to minors on the age of 18. He approached the cons consistent with public safety, and the consent owner does not pre preclude prohibiting the sale or possession of stun guns by minors. Accordingly, be advised that, the, that consistent within the consent order that the proposed rule uh, prohibit under NJSA 2C39-93 possession of a stun gun should still be forced against people under the age of 18, under people under the age of 18. Right. The key thing here that, is that one's pretty clear, right? Stun guns. We can't we can't sell them to anyone under the age of 18 and anyone under okay. the age of 18 can't be in possession of them. Period. That's pretty that's, that's pretty correct. straightforward. The two that are that are basically being ruled unconstitutional are the crime of the fourth degree for anyone having in his possession stun gun to the extent the statute statute prohibits blah 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 and then the also fourth degree to manufacture transport ship or sell or dispose of certain weapons, in this case, stun guns and tasers uh, or other electronic arms in New Jersey. So those are the two that have gone away. But the ones that are staying uh, are prohibitions on anyone under the age of 18, obviously, right? And then let's let's dig into the next few. 39.4D1, uh, 39.5D, 39.5E2, and 39.7A. And I, I know guys were throwing a lot of like alphabet soup at you. When I post this, it'll be much easier to read and follow along with. But for now, uh, just just kind of hang with us. Go ahead, Mike. So, so the one that could be, that's been coming to question the most, right, is thirty nine dash five D, right? Right. Uh, because that's apparent according to this document here is not been changed. It shall Correct. be continued to be enforced, including two C thirty nine dash five D. Possession of a stun gun under circumstances not manifestly appropriate for such lawful use as it may have. And the argument that I'm seeing a lot on Facebook is, well, I'm carrying for self-defense. That's a lawful purpose. But here it is. In New Jersey, that's not a lawful purpose. Uh, so we're going to go to Exhibit A. Right. Now, we're going to see. Now. With me here, I just had my, my section. I had Mike's pulling up another piece of New Jersey's criminal code um, because this is the, and this is what I'm talking about with the choose your own adventure. 
you know, if, if you remember those books as a kid, you had to, you read so far and it told you, okay, if you choose to do this, then go to this page. If you choose to do that, then go to that page. And that's basically how New Jersey's criminal code works is that you uh -huh. get so far in the law and then you have to go look at something else in addition to that, right? The law references another law, another, the, the criminal code references another criminal code. So hang with us while Mike's looking for that. I'm going to, I'm going to hit some comments here while you're digging that up, Mike. Um, I'm ready to go anywhere. So let's let me know. All right. Let, let's, Seems let's hit some comments good. real quick. Yeah. Uh, Francis Patrick yeah. is here. Yeah. He's been through a couple of your courses. Doc is here. Doc knows you very well. Rhiannon is here. Tab Hayes, uh, another law enforcement professional from down in Maryland is, is with us tonight. Walt Keeley says, uh, if New Jersey would get rid of that ham planet you call a governor, maybe they can clean up the runaround laws that confuse the public. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, Walt. Uh, uh, Chris Christie has has not been really part of the problem as far as this goes. These all predate Chris Christie, um, and he hasn't passed anything new as far as restricting these things. Um, he certainly hasn't been uh, a strong proponent of any kind of controls on self-defense in addition to what already exists. It's up to our legislature to get rid of these things. And if you want to pin that on somebody, it's going to have to be Loretta Weinberg. So uh, Walt's from Pennsylvania. I think the stun gun has been around since 85, I want to say. Right. The stun gun right. Law. And I think Loretta Weinberg has been in office since like 1765. <laughs> so, all right. Tim Debris is here. John Farmer's watching. Joe Girardi says, I mean, you can just shoot people if they don't want you to stun them if your life is in danger. Um, we'll get into that in a minute, Joe, because, again, it's not as simple as you may think, particularly if you are not inside your home, which, again, is, you know, we're not going to give too much of Mike's classes away because it's a lot of what he focuses on in his trainings. But, yeah, it's not as cut and dry as, as well, my life was in danger, so I pulled the trigger. Uh, Ryan Christopher says the legislature needs to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and conveniently, there's an election coming up. So if you're from New Jersey and you're watching this video, get the hint. Okay, Mike, pick it up where you left off. All right, so let's go back to, to uh, older case laws uh, first. So, so we're just going to go with this here. I'm just going to read this one thing because everyone's a claim that, well, it's unconstitutional and all, the, and all this other stuff. With um, That's why we can carry it. And obviously, once again, we can possess a firearm. We can't carry it, right? That's not against the Constitution uh, as far as we go for right now. So we're going to go with self-defense as a lawful purpose in New Jersey. Purpose, all right? So we're going to go here. I'm going to read this right out of the law book which um, that I have here. The defense of self-defense is not general. This is all under now how you get charged with 39-5D. Right. right. This is all about this, this particular section here. Not manifestly appropriate defense. for such lawful uses. Right. Go ahead. All right. The defense of self-defense is not generally available to a charge here under except in the rare situation where a person grabs a weapon spontaneously to meet an imminent danger. See State versus Kelly, 1990. And see State versus Horman, if you're looking to. So, two is necessity, not usually a defense, except in cases of spontaneous and compelling danger. See State versus Kelly. Precautionary acts to arm oneself in anticipation of a future danger is precisely the type of conduct interdicted by 2C39-5D. Okay, so interdicted right, so means exactly, prevented for those of you, you know, not with the real strong vocabulary like Mike has. <laughs> um, so so what that's basically saying is that you do not have a right to arm yourself because you plan on defending yourself, right? You're not allowed to arm up. Uh, and... that self-defense is not considered a lawful purpose on its own, but rather if, if you were in possession of something that were then pressed into service as a defensive tool and realistically at that point is an improvised defensive tool, that may be appropriate. But so, and, and I'm sure the example we all use is if I carry a pocket knife because I use it to open boxes every day, that's my lawful purpose. If someone attacks me and I use the, the pocket knife that I carry to open boxes and I cut that person in in a self-defense scenario, that is still a lawful purpose because it was not intentionally carried specifically for self-defense. 
right? That's it. That's it in a nutshell. So, so you cannot carry it because you can't use that as, as a lawful purpose. And that's what everyone's trying to do now. They're saying, well, if I carry it, my lawful purpose is self-defense. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take my chances and all this other crazy nonsense. Right. The, so, the machismo um, gets involved right away. What's that? The, the machismo comes into play right away. Yeah. yeah Guys are like, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll sh- kill them all and let God sort them out. And, you know, better better judged by 12 than carried by six and all those goofy things. And, hey, you know, isn't one of your slogans, neither judged nor carried? Because <laughs> yeah, if, I'm pretty sure I got that. If your that's, actions that's are, are moral, lawful, and tactical, then you won't have to deal with, you won't lose any of those fights. So, yeah. All right. So, so with that too, we also have to look at too as, as further evidence of what just transpired within the last couple of months when the um, the person was just he was charged with possession of an unlawful with possession of a weapon inside of his home, and he appealed, and he won the case. All right, let's um, but well, let's is. let's back up on that, charged. Mike. Hold on, because people might might not be familiar with that story. So let's start with the narrative first, right? What took place in that case? Uh, in that particular case, a guy got in, in, in an argument with a neighbor. And then from there, it, uh, he, he went to his house. The, the neighbor came back to him. Um, he answered his door holding a machete. Um, from there, who knows, right? The neighbor says the guy threatened him with it. The guy says he broke broke some of his property. We don't really know. We're not, I wasn't really there. But, but the gist of it is, he was charged with um, assault as well as uh, possession of a weapon. And he beat the assault charge, but he was still charged with possession of a weapon. So it went all the way to the New Jersey Supreme Court where they decided, well, a guy can't possess a weapon in his home. Right. It's not illegal to possess in your home. If he was walking down the street with a machete and he didn't have a lawful purpose, he wasn't out there... Sh- Chopping some sugar cane, or uh, you know, cutting up coconuts and making margaritas, <laughs> he could be arrested. We're right. in his home. This with and this is the same thing. That's the same statute that's going to apply to a stun gun. You could possess it in your home, but you can't go outside and carry it because it's only made for self defense, and self defense is not a lawful purpose unless something else comes out, an amendment to some kind of law or another uh, memo from the attorney general. I'm going on what we have correctly right now from two days ago that is basically saying case law. Right. So again, behind the scenes, Mike and I had this conversation the other day and I went, Mike, you, I think you've really hit the nail on the head because he's laying out each one of these elements for me. Cause I don't have the legal education that, that Mike has certainly. Um, and I went, all right, so how do we present this? And, and I think I, at that point I suggested that you write it up or, or something, and then we kind of came up with the idea of doing the show tonight. Um, and within minutes of our conversation, who else came out with a similar suggestion, I guess we could call it, that no, it's it's not a good idea to start carrying one of these in New Jersey just yet? Who else came up with that, Mike? Uh, Evan Knappen did and a couple other uh, prominent lawyers in New Jersey that uh, – that I would trust. <laughs> yeah, Evan Knappen and, and Dan Schmutter. Um, so if you don't recognize those names, Evan Knappen is known as the premier firearms attorney in New Jersey. And Mr. Schmutter is uh, one of the attorneys affiliated with ANJRPC, which is New Jersey's arm of uh, the National Rifle Association. And they do a lot of work in Trenton fighting these things. <laughs> On our behalf. So if anybody knows this stuff forwards and backwards, it's probably those two guys. Right, Mike? Yeah, I'm not I'm not a lawyer, uh, but we teach the stuff and study the stuff enough where we kind of get the gist of it. Obviously, I can't re- represent you in a courtroom. But once again, all our information is for um, informational purposes only and not right. to be construed as legal, legal advice. Right. None of it's legal advice. <laughs> Nice job throwing out the disclaimer there. And that's probably where we should have started. So not, obviously none of this is legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. Mike's not a lawyer. Um, but we do have similar advice coming from two folks who are professional real and prominent lawyers. attorneys. Yeah, real lawyers, not just Facebook yeah. lawyers. Real lawyers uh, with degrees and 
uh, <laughs> bar credentials and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I think a lot of people are going to be really disappointed because as soon as they heard stun guns are legal, they figured there's one rule and that's there's no rules, right? They figured that was the end of, of any restrictions on these things whatsoever. And that's not the case. Uh, unfortunately, um, when this was brought to the Supreme Court, that element of the Second Amendment keeping... So, <laughs> so we regain the right to keep these arms, but we have not regained the right to bear these arms. I think that's a fair statement, Mike. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 100%. So uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about tonight, uh, because we've got you here. So we, we've, we've done a lot under your justifiable force umbrella tonight, and thank you for your insight there. Um, the other thing you've recently started is martial strength. You want to talk about that for a minute? Uh, opened up a gym, Martial Arts and Fitness Academy in Branchburg, New Jersey, which uh, next time you come, it's a mandatory workout mm -hmm. for you, just so you know. Right. You're going to, yeah. and, and if I try to, if I try to avoid it, you're just going to chase me through the parking lot and make me run, which still counts as a workout. Yeah, because I don't allow spectators. Right. No, and listen, I don't. I didn't watch anything. As soon as you guys started working out, I was out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, so I, I got, I got one more. I'm, I'm going to send you some right now, and I want, I want you to post it on the. Uh, actually, no, I, I can do it right now. Actually, this is this is from the Supreme Court ruling that we talked about earlier about the guy with the machete. Right. And one of the things it says. Even that, this is obviously nothing to do with the stun gun, but an idea. It mentions about Heller in this particular case. All right. Self defense is a potential defense to a possessory weapons offense. The Second Amendment guaranteed the individual right to possess and carry weapons in case of confrontation. It's Heller. Mm -hmm. But, well, I'm saying the but there, but in State versus Harmon, the court held that self-defense does not excuse the possession of a weapon under NJSA 2C39-5D, except in those rare and momentary circumstances where an individual arms himself spontaneously to meet an immediate danger. In, in Kelly, the court found no self-defense instruction was warranted in absence of such a spontaneous action during a street encounter. So basically, you don't need that spontaneousness inside of your home. Right. Only in a street encounter. Right. And that's why you could best possess it in your home and use anything in your home or possess it um, and use it in self-defense because it's not required once again. So that's just another thing. And I'll, I'm going to post that right now out there and further, you know. Yeah, well, and and that's the other thing. Is I that's, think that's important. We've, we've got a lot of people citing case law and stuff, too. And again, you know, I'm talking about conversations on Facebook. And the people citing these case laws are not necessarily uh, lawyers either, uh, arguing that, yeah, you can carry this stuff. But the, the bottom line is, uh, unfortunately, there's going to have to be a second Supreme Court decision. Like, like I said, gain the right to keep them, still working on the right to bear them in New Jersey. And I think that's really the whole thing. Um Mark Cheeseman and his attorney were successful at getting the possessory part of it squared away to the extent that you can you can now own these legally in New Jersey. Carrying them is a separate issue, and that's going to be a whole separate fight, unfortunately. And I think it's one um, it's it's obviously going to happen. It's it's in the pipeline. How soon we don't know. What plaintiff? What what case it'll be? We don't know yet. But um, yeah, I think I think it's it's in the works pretty clearly. Let's take a couple of comments here real quick, Mike. Uh, I'm going back up here. Doc Schoenfeld says uh, Joe Girardi needs to take one of your classes. So, I, and again, in Joe's defense, Joe is from Pennsylvania, where the laws are are considerably different from those in New Jersey. 
So uh, it, it, Joe, in all seriousness, Joe, it may be worth it to come out to New Jersey and take one of Mike's classes. The moral tactical part is certainly going to be advantageous. The lawful portion is going to give you a real eye opener as to the differences in the laws between Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Um, Tony's comment. Well, Mike's. But, but, but let, 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 let's just go back real quick. And I don't want people to get misconstrued here. Right. Because we talk about this all the time where possession and self defense law is not the same. The use of force and self protection has nothing to do with your ability to possess any anything. We're just, because now we're talking about is, well, can I possess a stun gun to defend myself? Well, there's no self-defense in New Jersey. Well, no. Self-defense in New Jersey law is pretty liberal and pretty much the same as all other states. The difference is our possession laws are not the same. Right. So I can't arm myself. So when I arm myself, most of the time that's either with a some type of a weapon. So the only thing in New Jersey that I'm allowed to use criminally as well as civilly and have um, immunity for is pepper spray. Right? Three-quarters of an ounce. Uh, pepper spray. That's the only thing that it actually gives not only legal justification, civil. And use it, and uh, you can't be sued. That's there's arming yourself, but there's an exemption. Right. Specifically, the exemption for pepper spray. Right. So, well, and, so and maybe I misspoke when I when I outlined what I want Joe to come to one of your courses for. But yeah, it's 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 two different animals. Um, and the possessory stuff is what's, again, you know, in Pennsylvania, as a resident of Pennsylvania, I go down to the, the county sheriff's office and I fill out my paperwork and pay my fee and get my photo taken for my concealed weapons permit, um, which is really a concealed handgun license in, in the Commonwealth. But um, when I check off why, I check off self-defense and that's acceptable. And that's a, a valid reason to carry a firearm outside my home in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. In New Jersey, you have to meet the requirement of justifiable need, which is a whole separate standard, which is kind of arbitrary and difficult to meet anyway. But that's why so many people do not have their concealed handgun permit or concealed weapon permit in New Jersey. So multiple layers to the whole thing, right? It, it, Possession is different from self-defense, but at the same time, once we're, we're talking about two different uh, arenas, too, inside the home versus outside the home. And my understanding is outside the home is where your duty to retreat comes into play, too. Is that correct? Jersey's duty to retreat state, right, which applies only outside of your home and only applies to deadly force. There you go. So if you're not employing deadly force, there's no there's no duty to retreat. Uh, and, that, and that's it. So the whole idea is of, of firearms and tasers and all this other stuff is I don't want people to get misconstrued as they say, well, in New Jersey, you can't defend yourself. Well, no, that just means I can't carry a gun. Doesn't mean I can't pick up a rock if someone's trying to kill me and simply kill them first. Right. All right. Back to the comments real quick, Mike, because there's there's some good ones here. Uh, Tony Simon. I think you've met Tony before, Mike. Uh, he, uh, never, he, uh, never heard of him. Never heard of him. Nice. <laughs> uh, Tony says, Mike's classes are worth much more than they cost. Go to one and learn what you don't know. Um, yeah, that, it's like I said, it was certainly an eye-opener for me. Francis Patrick is commenting that uh, the same weapons self-defense laws as England. Um, I would have to do a lot of research before I can confirm or deny that. Walt Keeley says, I will use anything and everything in my current environment to defend myself and my family, but hopefully my situational awareness will keep me out of those situations. So I think from a tactical standpoint, avoidance is always the best option, right, Mike? Avoidance? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. If I can avoid getting into a confrontation. Well, here it is. You win 100% of the fights you don't enter, right? <laughs> yeah, that's... that's yes. Yes. Very That's eloquent no way of putting it. Uh, Doctor, uh, go ahead. I avoid entering a confrontation. Well, then I won because here it is. I tell people all this all the time. I think people in general just believe they're a lot tougher than they are. They're a lot stronger. They're a lot wiser. They're a lot of everything, right? Um, mm -hmm. They always win, and they, in their mind, they're Bruce Willis and Die Hard. It's in uh, Independence Day. They're beating aliens. And they're taking down uh, the Russian mob with uh, a revolver 
and all this other crazy stuff. But in real life, the bad guy could kill you just as easy as, as you could kill him. Yeah. And I think what happens is people have to stop living in a fantasy world and start entering into reality where you can be killed for simply beeping your horn nowadays. A guy will come out, get out of his car, and shoot you in the face. Sometimes I got to post videos on you on YouTube and on my Facebook page where people are simply walking down the street and they just get just get crushed or, or beat down and all those other things. And they don't realize real violence, right? Because in their head, they're always going to be the winner. And right. They don't want to look at – because there's, let's look at violence in general, right? We have social and asocial violence. Right? If Charles Manson's out there, that's going to be the, uh, the psychopath, sociopath, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer's of the world, right? But then right. we have the, the social violence where the social violence is almost, I would say, 100% avoidable if you're just able to go and walk away. When we say walk away, people think of that as being cowardice. We're not, um, well, I'm, 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 you don't want to be a punk. But, here, but here's the reality of it. Leave an altercation on your own terms, meaning not out of true fear and cowardice, meaning I'm, you're bowing down to a person, but under reasonableness of, hey, if you enter a confrontation, three things can happen. The guy can kill you or you go to prison. I mean, yeah. that's really the extent of it in this day and age. And unless you're really ready for one of those three things to happen, you should try to avoid a confrontation at all costs. Now, if somebody's robbing you, mugging you, um, you know, doing something to your family, by all means, defend yourself until the bitter end. But if you can avoid a situation, because once again, there comes a fine line between you being the aggressor and you being a mutual combatant or you being a person that's truly attempting to escape and having to defend yourself. And that's the problem. We look at these cases and we always use examples of, oh, man, you see this guy, he got 15 years for this, this, and this. I said, what you understand is the there's that thin line that you have to walk where true self-defense cases very rarely exist. And when they do, like even the, the cases that we're citing here, all these appeals that go to the Jewish Supreme Court, guns illegally and they shot people or they carried a knife to stab somebody that, that, that had words with them the week before. And then we're just getting out these little blurbs that we kind of go on how to dictate how, how, how to use self-defense law. So the idea is we have to avoid confrontations because if you don't try to avoid it first, it's not what, and, and Andrew Bronco, my instructor, says this. It's not what you really did. It's what the prosecutor can make you think, the jury think that you really did. Right. There it is. That was that was a long rant, but that's how. No, I that's I, listen, and and <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't ask you to be on the show to be quiet, Mike. So by all means, <laughs> run off as much as you want. Just uh, you know, you got to figure out how to make sure people are going to pay for your classes later. <laughs> um. So uh, Doc Schoenfeld's got a couple of comments here. He's, he's pointing out that this is educational, and that was the point where we were talking about that neither of us are lawyers, uh, and, and even though we're reading the law to you, um, it's, in, it's entirely up to you how you act upon it. Um, his argument is so you can own a stun gun but cannot use it as design, meaning outside of your home, and that's, that's the possessory portion of it that hasn't changed that's kind of uh, – kind of giving us a little bit of a, a headache here. Um, Tony says, yeah, Doc, New Jersey's messed up. There's Mike's comment with the uh, the opinions from the attorneys. Doug Vliet is here. Come on. Now my phone's not cooperating. Ryan Christopher says, what about deadly force inside of your home duty to retreat? Ryan, no duty to retreat inside your home. Let me say that again. No duty to retreat inside your home. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice sign up for U.S. Law Shield by going to, what's the website, Mike? Uh, you can find, go to justifiableforcetraining.com. There's a link. There you go. Justifiableforcetraining.com. Use the link there to sign up for U.S. Law Shield and actually talk to an attorney about it. Uh, but yeah, no duty to retreat inside your home. Inside your home is the key element there. Um, <laughs> Doc's cracking the joke. Don't start. None won't be none. Uh, if you're going to pick fights, know when to walk away. Uh, and Walt Keeley's talking about how his front door is locked for the intruder's protection, not his. You cross that threshold, 
You won't wake up the next day. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. And we've already talked about how that kind of plays into, into a couple of things. So Wait, well, let's address that comment here. Let's, let's uh, sure. Would you really rather be judged by 12 at all? If you could avoid it. No, let's absolutely not. I'd because I, I'll give you an example. All right. You got, you got George Zimmerman who was judged by 12. A uh, million dollars of his life, uh, all, the, all the things he had to go through. And, and the whole idea is you want to avoid confrontations. I mean, George Zimmer made some very stupid errors, which could have been avoided this whole situation. So but here's the thing. A guy like that has the mindset of I have the right to do this or rather be judged by 12 and care, all, that, all that nonsense mentality versus, hey, my job is, is to save myself if I'm being attacked, not to go and look for trouble. And I'm the first person to say, hey, if a guy's kicking down your door, Sean, you can even finish my sentence for me. Um, what happens? Shoot him in the face. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, my, but the moral of the story is, is you don't look for trouble. You don't attempt to all of a sudden put the the attitude out there that you're looking for any of this stuff to happen because you, let's be honest you don't want to be judged by 12 right yeah it's, because it's not a good option <laughs> it's not an option you know we try to avoid that at all costs you know yeah it's actually in my job description that i might have to testify in court and let me tell you something i do everything i can uh to not have to go to court ever <laughs> it's it's really like i feel like if i'm if i'm talking to somebody else's attorney or if i'm talking to a law enforcement officer inside the police station it's because i've made some terrible choices to get there and, and that's what training is all about that's what, what, what we're talking about is is the idea to make sound decisions that have favorable outcomes in all of these situations Mm -hmm. Because plenty of times when we read the NRA news, and so you know it's always a, a positive story about a, a lawful uh, defensive gun use, but how many stories do we hear that are just terrible? Yeah, it's a hot mess, uh, and it looks like Facebook is losing the feed here They're for some reason. Feed. Yeah, um, which is fine. We'll we'll wrap it up in a couple of minutes anyway because I'm running out of. Uh, bandwidth and battery power here too. So um, what I'll do is I'll get this uploaded to uh, to YouTube as quick as I possibly can and people can watch it that way. But yeah, I think that's, that's huge there, Mike. Um, understanding that avoiding the legal battle after the fight is just as important as surviving the fight, right? Making sure that your actions were, <laughs> like you always say, moral, lawful, and tactical, will result in I mean, positive outcomes in, in all three fields. So there's plenty of stories, but here, here it is. A guy defends himself legally and maybe he shoots somebody he shouldn't have, or, or somebody's in the town's relative or son or, or daughter or husband. And now he's getting pressure. I mean, you look at, you know, even if you look at law enforcement officers that were acquitted in deadly force scenarios, your life is never the same. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Illusion. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm uh, I'm killing the stream though because yeah, like I said, we we've already lost Facebook. So, um, thank you, Mike. We'll wrap okay. it up there. I think that's been hugely valuable to everybody watching. And again, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna tag a couple of those things in the uh, in the show notes that get attached to the YouTube video. Um, yeah, and hopefully it's been educational for everybody who's watched. I know we lost the, the Facebook feed at this point, but shit happens. <laughs> All right, so um, very good. What other courses do you have coming up in, let's say, the next three or four weeks? Uh, nothing until the end of the year. Obviously, the holidays are coming up, so we won't have a schedule next year uh, coming up. So okay. Go Is to our Facebook page. Just go to our website, justfallforcetraining.com. And if and people are interested in getting a, uh, a good workout, where do they find martial strength? 
Well, you can find it at Marshall Strength Training Academy on uh, Route 202 in Branchburg. Um, Website, Facebook. MarshallStrength.com. MarshallStrength.com. And on Facebook? Marshall Strength Training Academy. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Greatly appreciated. And uh, bye, Felicia.